fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today. What's your gun, Alan? Uh, I got a big striper. I don't know how big it is. Probably like five, six pounds. I don't know. Alan, do you have a certain water temperature that you start tossing the A-Rig? Yeah, usually when the water temperature drops below 58 degrees, I, it's kind of a signal to me to pick up the A-Rig. Because basically what happens is when the water temperature drops below 58 degrees, the shad seem to more to bunch up. You know, they spawn in the winter, so they bunch up more and gather up in groups. So yes, 58 below. Today was 50 degrees. So it has to be, usually I don't pick it up unless it drops below 58. What you got? You got one? Got a big one. Lift it up gently. Lift it gently. And today we came into the sloughs and we, were, we used two things. We used the birds and we used electronics. And can you talk a little bit about that? And those are probably the most important things. Like I couldn't fish if I didn't have my meters with me. Um, the birds are very important because, you know, when they're flying up high, they have some capability of looking a lot of times, like this morning you'd see them go like this and not hit the water. You know, they, the bait fish wasn't getting pushed all the way to the top, but they knew they were on top of it. So they are milling around. If you see them milling around real tight, you know, like going around like this in a small circle, then most of the time you got a sea lion down there. But when they start roaming around, going like this, dipping, that's a good indication just to get over there. And I use my electronics. I got all the high tech stuff on there now. And, and I could, we could see the fish. I mean, I could see them on 2D. I think you did some little video and you could see the fish on 2D when they were right under the boat. You could see them clear as day. And then on the live, you could actually see my A-rig coming back and boop, you see the fish eat it. It's not fair. There, see it? That's my A-rig. Look at them all, see them all in there, 2D. And you'll see them on the live when they turn in. So. Those are all stripers on the active, on the left. You can see them coming in.
There's a bunch down there. I'll get on the after. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Oh, and there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> he said, hey, look at that. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh, oh. Look at the grass. Mm -hmm. right. That was pretty cool. <laughs> and when you see sea lions, do you generally stay in that area or do you still um, get bit? A lot of times they'll come in and chase the fish away, but I think if they're, they stay a little bit away from you, you know, they're getting really brave. Today we saw four in there. We were only in a little area, maybe about a quarter mile, and there was four sea lions. But they seemed to stay out, and just something told me, you know, like, go back over there and look. And we went over there and just hammered them. So it's just a, these fish are just like any other fish. They use certain areas, like there was one little area there, and we caught them there in the morning. Sea lion came, and they all left. And then as we worked our way out, then the sea lions stayed way out there. So something told me, just go over there and look. So we go over there and look, look at the meter, fish all over the place, and we start hooking them left and right. It's crazy. I mean, you are getting two, three hits on a cast. It's just crazy. Just something about the A-rig, they lose all their sense of safety. They just go crazy. Keeper. Fish on. A-rig. I like it right here. There's something about it. No, you ain't. Oh you lost my fit. You have to let me put my rod down before you hand me a rod. I thought I was going to come to hand Now we're eating. No way. I was much bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. oh, now you tell yeah, right. me give me a peeny boony one? I don't think so. Yeah, right. That was the biggest one of the day. Yeah. The biggest baby of the day. <laughs> Get eight inches. Yeah, right. Here they are, right in the boat. See? See them on the live and 2D. Oh, they're locked. Huh? Yeah, they're look locked. at them all. See them all? Yeah. That's the shawm right here. Oh my God, there's a ton of them. Yeah, real slow. It's shawm. Come on, that. Oh, there he is. Oh, you dummy. Oh, I got him again. Oh, you dummy. Oh, I got him again. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, nice one, too. Oh, jeez. That's a nice one. <laughs> you see how many times that sucker hit? Fish on. That sucker hit three times. Nice one. Oh, let me get him in for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that, that guy. He's way bigger than we thought. See that fish? See that fish? Yeehaw. Avery. Oh, see him on the meter. They're all over. Just jig it. He's a nice fish. No, he's not. That's a little dinker. It's not stinky. He's fine. <laughs> not even. Sorry, it's got bigger ones. So. <laughs> that's not a dink. That's still a keeper. Ain't no keeper. Give me a new. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I must not have the right. Here we go. You got you got you got it. Fish on people. Every cat on the A rig.
And do you find you get um, pretty good sized fish using a rig versus saying using a single fish trap? Oh yeah. Here, you, it, today, if you were to do a single fish trap, you might get one here and there. But with the a rig, you know, you you are there and you are we're getting them every cast, and sometimes two, three hits on a cast. And like you, you can even cast very far. You are still getting hey. a, a lot of hits. <laughs> so, I still caught. <laughs> but I put. I put ones on yours with with blades on it, so it had a little more traction. You know, it's more flash, so it seemed to attract them fish. Because like I said, I was casting twice as far as you, and I didn't have any blades on there. But I wanted to try them on yours just because I knew you won't be able to, these things are heavy. But you are getting a lot of hits, so those blades seem to really help. So you have to change up. That's why you ha I, bu I buy them both ways, with and without, weighted head and without, because every day is different and you just have to experiment. And we were also um, reeling in differently. Like you, you like to cast out and you like to reel a certain way. And what I was doing, because I could see them on the meter that they are real low to the ground, the, the stripers, I was just letting it drop down, you know, 15 or 20 feet and letting right. it sit see? there. Because and kind you, of bouncing it back. Because when you cast, you can't cast as far, so you have to let it sink. Where I threw it out, and then when I started reeling slow, and we saw it on the live. I mean, you could, I could see where that A-rig on that live coming back. I could see exactly where it is. And one of the things about that live target is that when the lure gets a foot or lower to the bottom, it goes away. You can't see it. You notice that? Mm -hmm. You can't see it disappears so a lot of times the fish are up and then they'll go away so as long as i see them come up and middle around and then go away i know they're still down there so i just let that a rig drop down i don't even see it but i know it's there because i saw it go down there i noticed a few times when we cast out you know we would just get a tap do you just continue reeling or do you let it stop just and sink keep again? reeling usually like when you feel tap you should just keep reeling until you feel it load and then set the hook Sometimes it's very hard to do that because the bigger fish seem to whack it a little bit harder than the little ones. Where some baits, the bigger they are, the less you feel. A rig is the opposite. The bigger they are, the harder they jerk. So you know, do you be ready and just set the hook hard. And I know on the A rigs, we're, we're out here targeting the bigger fish. Now, do you have the experience that I had this summer with spinner baits? Every time I would get a good sized fish, my spinner bait would break? Or how are the, what is the durability of the A-rigs? The A-rigs are more durable. Um, most of them depends on, they have like one especially for stripers and they're, I think Rick uses, the blade runner uses 54 thousandths wire, so it's a lot stiffer. And I would recommend using those for stripers. And then um, some of the ones, I think the smaller ones are probably still probably 38 thousandths and you know they're they're pretty flexible and I haven't had very many of them break but if you catch a lot of fish and you bend them back and forth then I would after a while I would change it otherwise I mean I've had them come back and, and break them off because I don't change them otherwise but if I was compelling fishing I would change it after maybe 10. But heck, you catch 10 real quick over here. And you retie your, do you retie your knot, your main knot? Um, I always feel it. Usually with the A-rig, you don't have to worry them cutting it or getting it along their gills or anything because it's so far away from the knot. You know, it's six inches back behind the knot. So guys, when I tie this on to my rod, you do not use a swivel. Don't use a swivel, you know, where you snap it on. Tie direct. It works 10 times better, just tie it direct, because you don't want that mobility, you want it solid tie here. It's when you hook the striper or whatever you're doing with a A-rig, I recommend not using a net because this thing will get tangled in there and you have to play hell getting it out, you'll probably bend it and ruin it. So I usually just reach down and grab them. If it's a big one, then I use a gripper, you know, the thing that you grab the mouth with and lift them up. And one of the other things on these things, when you storm on blade runners, he puts a, a ring right here. So I could slide this ring down. So on blade runner is a rig, see this ring right here? I slide it down like this and then it keeps it all nice and tidy for storage.
Otherwise, how do you store them? I put a rubber band around them. <laughs> okay. So guys, this last week, I put a couple double digit fish in the boat, stripers on the A-rig. I mean, it's very deadly this time of the year. So I hope you like my video. If you do, please hit the like and please subscribe because it'll help my channel out greatly. Then if you look on the bottom, you could click that little button. You can leave me a comment. I mean, you could ask me anything I did on this video or any, anything anywhere or anything about anything. And I'll get back to you within two to three days. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.